Hello and welcome to another Generation Behind Hi-Fi video and today I'm going to be doing a look inside video on my Heco Aurora 700 floor standing speaker. Now I know some of you are not very familiar with Heco as a brand, but they're not brand new. They've actually been around in Germany making speakers since 1949. It wasn't until recently, thanks to audio advice, that we've been able to purchase their products in America. Now I've had this speaker for about a month and a half and I gotta say, I am thoroughly impressed with its sound quality. Now let's find out if the build quality matches the sound quality. All right, I'm just gonna come out and say it. I'm a huge German car fan and have been ever since I was a kid. Back in those days, the Porsche 928S4, the Mercedes-Benz 560 SCC, and BMW 645 CSI were among the cars that I lusted after the most. Since I know the Germans can build phenomenal cars, as well as make delicious beer and chocolate, can their speakers be equally as good? With that being said, the bar has been set pretty high, so please don't break my heart, Heiko. The Heiko Aurora 700 is a three-way base reflex floor standing speaker design. It features a 6.5 inch mid-range driver, a 28 mm fabric dome tweeter, and two 6.5 inch base drivers. Heiko claims the Aurora 700 has a sensitivity rating of 92 dB at 2.83 volts, which is very impressive for a speaker of this size. You definitely don't need a huge amplifier to drive these speakers with efficiency like that. My Heiko Aurora 700s are finished in a beautiful satin black finish that is mixed with a modern wood grain finish for the sides and back of the speaker. On the back of the speaker is where the two ports and speaker terminals are located. The Heiko Aurora 700 can be bi-wired or bi-amped. At the time of this video, the Heiko Aurora 700 had an MSRP of $699 each, but I have seen them on sale for as low as $419 each. That means you can get a pair of these babies for under a thousand bucks shipped to your door. As for how the Heiko Aurora 700 sounds, I'll talk more about that in my review video, which will be out in a few months. Without further ado, let's get started with the teardown. So the first thing I'm going to remove on this speaker is the speaker terminal plate here. It's got four three millimeter Allen screws and then once I have that removed, I can lay the speaker flat on its back and start removing the drivers. Here's the terminal plate that I just removed from my Heco Aurora 700 speakers. It's actually plastic, so I know probably on camera it might look like it's aluminum, but uh, in reality it really is just plastic with a fake brushed aluminum finish on it. They've done a really nice job of uh, fooling people, even myself I'll admit. And uh, the binding posts, all four of them, seem to be of pretty decent quality for this price range. I like them. They've got gold-plated terminals, four of them on the back. Now let's find out if we have any ferromagnetic materials that are being used. So we have nothing there. Nothing there. Nothing there. Oh, right there. So the nuts that they're using to fasten the binding posts to the terminal plate, these nuts are gold-plated steel. So there is ferromagnetic material in the signal path just on the nuts that could easily be rectified by replacing these with brass. The tweeter is held in place by four 3 millimeter Allen screws. The tweeter shares the same enclosure volume with the base drivers. Heiko is using a 1.1 inch fabric dome tweeter that has a pretty large ferrite magnet on the back, plus an additional bucking magnet. I'm not really sure why they are using bucking magnets on all of their drivers. Back in the day, bucking magnets were used to cancel out the magnetic field from the main magnet so the speaker could be placed next to a tube television without interfering with it. Since tube TVs are no longer a thing anymore, I'm not really sure what the bucking magnet is being used for. I have read a few articles on the internet that suggest bucking magnets can slightly increase the efficiency of the driver, but I don't know if this is entirely true or not. 
Maybe someone watching this video can fill us in. I think I'm pronouncing this right, but Heiko calls the tweeter a Fluctus tweeter. I don't really know what Fluctus means, but I think it's referring to the computer-optimized waveguide that has a bunch of rings around it. Supposedly, those rings around the faceplate of the tweeter act as a waveguide to improve its dispersion characteristics. I don't really understand how it works, but from my many listening sessions with these speakers, I would say the waveguide is doing a great job. Because whether you are listening to these speakers on access or slightly off access, they sound just as good. Now let's see how much this tweeter assembly weighs. On my scale, this tweeter weighed in at 1 pound and 4 ounces. Here are the TS parameters of the tweeter that I measured using my Dayton Audio DATS V3 system. The mid-range driver is held in by six 3mm Allen screws that are screwed directly into the MDF without any metal inserts. I'm not at all surprised by the omission of metal inserts because to design a speaker that sounds this good and also be affordable is a lesson in compromises. Wow, the mid-range driver is isolated in its own chamber within the enclosure. I definitely wasn't expecting to see this type of attention to detail on such an affordable set of tower speakers. Isolating the mid-range driver from the base driver will prevent coloration and improve mid-range clarity. On most budget priced three-way speaker designs, all three drivers, the tweeter, mid-range, and base drivers will all share the same enclosure with no isolation between them. In this type of enclosure design, the base driver or drivers can pressurize the enclosure to the point that the diaphragm on the mid-range driver is forced to be pushed out. This type of interaction between the base and mid-range driver can cause unwanted excursion, which then leads to higher harmonic and intermodulation distortion. To put it another way, it equals terrible sound quality. Nice job, Heiko, for isolating the mid-range driver from the base drivers. The mid-range driver used in the Heiko Aurora 700 is 6.5 inches in size. The driver utilizes a stamped steel basket, a decent sized ferrite magnet, plus an additional bucking magnet, a rubber surround, and a comb material that is made from craft paper. Heiko is using a couple of design techniques to keep the voice coil cool during those loud listening sessions that their customers might subject their speakers to. The first one is utilizing a vented pole piece on the motor structure, which allows cool air to indirectly reach the voice coil. When the cone of the woofer moves forward, the excursion draws in cool air. As the cone moves backwards, warm air is pushed out. The second design technique Heiko is using to keep the voice coil cool is to vent the voice coil under the spider. This type of cooling can be characterized by the vents that surround the voice coil between the motor structure and the spider. This is the area of the woofer that gets the hottest. Air is directed in and out of these vents, which help keep the voice coil cool. Now let's see how much the mid-range driver weighs. On my scale, the mid-range driver weighed in at 2 pounds and 9.1 ounces. The DC resistance of this mid-range driver measured between 3.6 and 3.7 ohms on my Fluke digital multimeter. Next, I'm going to put this driver on my bench so I can measure its TS parameters. Here are the TS parameters that I measured with my Dayton Audio DATS V3. The mid-range driver has a resonant frequency of around 57 Hz. Voice coil inductance, or LE, measured extremely well considering how affordable these speakers are. Sound quality of a speaker driver is directly correlated with the inductance of its voice coil. A speaker with a high inductance voice coil will not sound as good as a speaker with a low inductance voice coil. The reason for this is high inductance is a major source of harmonic distortion and also hurts transient response. No doubt, Heiko is offering their customers a lot of value for their dollars here. The Heiko Aurora 700s utilize two 6.5 inch base drivers in each cabinet. Each driver is held in by six 3mm Allen screws. Both 6.5 inch drivers share the same ported enclosure volume with the tweeter. What surprised me most about the base drivers is that they look identical to the mid range driver, but they must be different because each driver has its own part number. So here are the base drivers and mid base driver from the Heiko Aurora 700. And they look identical in size and uh, motor structure as well. 
I mean, they look like exactly the same speakers, just with a different decal on them. They both have the same beauty rings. They both utilize the same craft paper cones. And then if I flip them over, right here's the base driver I just flipped over. And let me flip over the mid range. I mean, they look identical. I mean, as you can tell, the part numbers are different. This one ends in 880D for the base driver, and the mid-range ends in 480D. So they both share a lot of the same technologies, too. So, for instance, they both have stamped steel baskets. They have uh, integrated gaskets on the back of, their, of the frame here. And then they both utilize... Uh, vented pole pieces and then there are also vents underneath the spider as well to keep the, the voice coil cool. Both the woofer and mid-range drivers from the Aurora line use the same cone material made from craft paper. To make the craft paper cones, Haeckel first starts with wood pulp which is then blended with wool fibers, water, and a specially developed chemical substance. After the blending is complete, the material is run through a machine which Haeckel calls the Dutchman which twists the fibers perfectly to produce a lightweight, rigid, and well damped paper cone. Heiko claims that by adding the wool fibers to the cone mixture, that it improves the damping characteristics of the cone. Now let's weigh the base driver to see how much it weighs. And on my scale, the base driver is coming in at 2 pounds and 9.4 ounces, and the mid-range driver was slightly less at 2 pounds and 9.1 ounces. The DC resistance of the base driver came in at 6.4 ohms, which is quite a bit higher than the DC resistance of the mid-range driver. I have a theory on why this is, which I'll talk about later. Now let's compare the TS parameters between the mid-range driver and the base driver. Now that I have measured both the base and mid-range drivers on the bench, there are a few differences between them. The DC resistance of the base drivers is higher at 6.4 ohms versus the 3.4 ohms for the mid-range. The base drivers do have slightly lower resonant frequency than the mid-range driver, and the voice coil inductance is quite a bit higher on the base drivers at 0.556 millihenries. I'm totally speculating here, but I think what Heiko is doing is they are running the two subwoofers in parallel, which would reduce the total DC resistance from 6.4 to 3.2 ohms. A benefit of running the base drivers in parallel also means the total inductance is reduced significantly, which would further enhance transient response and sound quality. So what kind of cabinet construction do you get for your $1400? For starters, front baffle, one inch thick. That's impressive. Sides and rear cabinet walls are five eighths of an inch thick. And then the mid-range driver has its own enclosure. And it's separated from the tweeter and the base drivers. That's something you don't see on uh, very often on budget floor standing speakers. And then look at the damping material. It's not super thin or cheap looking either. It's not bad. I mean, you guys got to remember, you got to, I mean, this is, these are budget oriented speakers that you can pick up for as low as 419 each. And they've got damping material all throughout the cabinet here. And then on top of that, we've got a couple of braces even. So we've got a brace right here that runs from front to back. And then they've added another brace somewhere around in this area that goes from front to back. And then if you look inside the cabinet, you should be able to see our two ports there. And I don't know how well that's coming through, but the ports are flared. See, they're flared on the inside. And they're also flared on the outside. 
And then working our way down, we have these outriggers here. They are made of plastic, which is no surprise at this price point. But you do get two sets of feet. Mine came with steel spikes and then also rubber spikes. So if you've got carpet, you can use the steel, steel spikes. And if you've got uh, hardwood floors like I do, then just pop on the rubber ones. So if you're an avid watcher of my channel, then you probably know recently I reviewed a set of bookshelf speakers that cost $2,200 per pair. Now I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna say the name, but, all, but I am gonna say is the construction quality of the cabinet from those speakers that cost $2,200 per pair were nowhere near as good as the construction quality on these Heiko Aurora 700s. Tremendous value for money, guys. Tremendous value for money. First, you have to understand that these are floor standing speakers and pretty good ones too that can be purchased for less than $1,000 per pair. With that being said, I wasn't expecting Heiko to spend this much time or money on developing such a complex crossover network for such an affordable set of speakers. Sure, there is nothing spectacular on this crossover network, but Heiko has devoted quite a bit of money to its design judging by the component count. This tells me that Heiko isn't willing to compromise the sound quality of their products to save a few bucks. I'm seeing quite a few metalized polyester film capacitors or more commonly known as MET capacitors on the tweeter circuit. I'm also seeing iron core inductors, sand cast resistors, and electrolytic caps. Using these components in the crossover design is not surprising considering the price point that these speakers are sold at. Like I said, there's nothing spectacular on this crossover board, but the sum of their parts have really helped create a phenomenal sounding speaker for a very affordable price. In my opinion, these speakers, especially when they're on sale, are one of the best value propositions that I have seen in this hobby for a very long time. These truly are magnificent speakers for the money. Now I'm curious about the Aurora 1000s, if their baby brother is this good. And that's my look inside video on the Heiko Aurora 700 speakers. So long and happy listening.